What we're going to cover is uh, annuals, mailers, a website, blog, social media, drop-offs, associations and clubs, and competitions. Um, on this page, by the way, is a, like a postcard I sent out last year, uh, which is what illustrators send postcards, but uh, designers do not go that route. So let's start with annuals. Is everybody familiar with communication arts? This is the number one biggest, most respected publication um, covering uh, photography, design, illustration, and um, any kind of communication media. And I, I highly recommend you look at it whenever it comes out. It comes out once every other month. Uh, six issues a year plus four annuals. Okay? So there are 10 total issues in the year. It's, it's a great magazine. It's written by people who are uh, working in the business. Um, they highlight uh, design firms uh, and photographers and artists in every issue, and they go into great lengths to do a, a long interview with them and talk about their working process. And um, It's really, really, really a great publication. Uh, anyway, the annual for the communication arts is every year they have a photography annual, a design annual, an illustration annual, and a, I guess you'd call it interactive annual. Okay. And the people who are featured in the annual are people like you and me who send their work in and say, is this good enough? Um, and that's it. It's an open call for work. But when you are actually printed and published in this magazine, you're going to have the exposure that you want to so many hundreds of thousands of people working in this business. And um, it's really, really valuable. So communication arts, definitely number one. If you're an illustrator, Society of Illustrators, you can enter their show. That's a very, very highly respected show, and the oldest show in the business. Um, American Illustration is the new kid in town. They've been around since the 70s, and um, they're, they have the hot party every year. Uh, those of you who want to go mingle with all the illustrators, you can go. It's in New York every year. It's a little too much for my taste. I don't like it, but um, every time I go there, I feel like you know everyone's a rock star, and it's just, it's, uh, but anyway. Um, how is another uh, graphic design publication, and they have a lot of annuals. They have more competitions than any other magazine, I think, on the shelves. So uh, they have a self-promotion annual. They have an internal design department annual. I can't remember what it's called. Um, they have one for uh, international competition, all kinds of stuff. 3x3 three three is, they're really new, but they do showcase new talent. And, but it's strictly illustration. So for the illustration folks, that's worth looking at. AIGA, so you guys know there's a chapter in Raleigh and a chapter in Charlotte, okay, the AIGA, um, American Institute of Graphic Arts. If you have not yet gone to an event in Raleigh or Charlotte, please consider going to one of the next events coming up. I think they have one every month. They have a speaker series. You can look on their website and see who's coming to talk. Has anybody heard of Stefan Sagmeister? Okay. Um, five, six years ago, he came down to Charlotte, believe it or not, and gave an amazing talk. And afterwards, we went and had pizza with him. So you, you get to really hang out with people who are at the top of the game and doing their thing um, on a much more personal level. And there's time to really uh, ask them questions. And the other great thing about it is you meet people who are working in the business. Uh, students should always go to AIGA stuff more than professionals because the professionals who show up might be looking to hire. Next is mailers. Um, for designers, a postcard is not going to cut it. Uh, but for illustrators, a postcard is just fine. Um, I only, nowadays, I only do one a year. I used to do one every quarter. But I've, I've got enough of a name out there to not worry about doing too many mailers. But um, for the, the designers, uh, the, the thing I could recommend for you guys is do something more creative with your mailer. If you're going to do something that's actually printed and mailed, You've got to make it stand out. It's got to be something either really useful for the person who's um, receiving it. Uh, I'm trying to think of a good example. Jessica Heesh uh, is a designer and a typographer up in New York. And uh, she, in the past, has sent out uh, ornaments. It's, it's, a, it's paper ornaments. It comes in two sheets of paper. You put them together. You hang them at Christmas time. They're really beautiful. Uh, but you've got to come up with something really creative and interesting because art directors and designers who receive all these mailers, they get them by the hundreds every week. You know? And their desk just kind of piles up. And if something doesn't catch their eye right away out of the mailbox, it's kind of like, whoops, on the pile, on the pile. And then I, I used to work at this design firm, my boss, David, I swear to you, one time I came in his office and he had this pile like this high. 
of just mailers coming in, right? And we're having a conversation about some project. And I said, when are you ever going to read those? He goes, he goes, ah, I don't know. Grabs his waste bin and goes and just throws them all in the garbage. That's the harsh reality of sending mailers. So it's got to be something that just, you know, they open it up and say, whoa, amazing. I got to look at this. Uh, so holiday cards, books, send a book. Um, nowadays, if you're really targeted with who you're approaching, you can afford to make a book for nothing. Uh, I use Lulu. Do you guys know Lulu? I'm telling you, I'll pass this around. Um, this cost me nine bucks, okay? And I made uh, 12 of these things, and I took them up to New York and just dropped them off with people I work with. But having an actual book means it'll stay on the shelf. They can see lots of samples of your work. Okay, they've got your contact information and it feels nice and it feels professional. If you really want to promote yourself in a great way, I, I highly recommend a book. When you've got the right work to, to send, um, it's, it's fantastic. Calendars are easy to make also on Lulu or on Cafe Press or any of these other publish it yourself sites. Website and blog. This for me is number one, okay? This is number one. None of us can live without the web these days. I mean, and, and when I say the web, it's not even the web anymore. It's just everything is online and our, our lives are online. So you have got to have a presence online. And nowadays, it's not even enough to have one. <laughs> it's ridiculous. You've got to have 10. So I have my main website, but then I have you know, a portfolio site on Draugr. I don't know how many of you guys know Draugr. It's an illustration website. Draw, G-E-R. I've got a Draugr website. I've got uh, Illos, which is a portfolio website, I-L-L-O-Z.com. Um, gosh, Communication Arts, the Creative Hot List, I've got a free listing. Anyway, the point is, you have got to flood the world with your work. Uh, there are tons of websites that will let you do that. Get out there and do it. But first, get yourself your own website so you have a domain name that points to your work, and you can always give a client that name. Make sure it's something they can remember too, because if for, you know, on the off chance you don't have something on you, and you're having a conversation with somebody who might hire you, and they, and your your website address is hey go here and check out my work.com, never gonna happen. It's got to be something you know like your name or, okay. Uh, I got stuck with this stupid middle initial because <laughs> some other guy named Kyle Webster owns KyleWebster.com, so now I'm Kyle T Webster and uh, like the whole illustration world knows me as Kyle T. Webster. It's really annoying, but I have no choice because that's my URL. So anyway, um, no incomplete pages. If you're going to put up a website, don't you dare put up a page that says under construction <laughs> because they're going to leave. That was so 1998. It's not, not okay anymore. Keep it current. This is the problem with the web. Everybody expects everything to be so up to date by the minute Twitter has just ruined our lives because we just expect everybody to be on top of their stuff. If I go to another illustrator's website and I see the same image I saw two weeks ago, I think they're not working. They must, they must not be getting hired, which is totally untrue because I have a hard time updating my stupid website more than once a month, but I have to do it or people will think I'm just sitting at my desk doing this going, where's the phone going to ring? Am I going to get any jobs? It, it, you just have to stay up to date with your stuff. And, um, Thankfully, the tools are in place now with Blogger and all these other sites, Flickr. You can update your stuff. Um, show your best work. This is another problem we have with Twitter and all these other things, is because you can show so much work and you can update so fast, doesn't mean you always should. Uh, contact info, easy to find. This is on every page, very top. I highly recommend you guys do the same thing. If you're going to have your contact info, throw it up to the top and just make it a permanent fixture on your site. Don't make people go hunting for it. Um, and I really recommend throwing in a phone number. I know it's really personal. You don't want people bugging you. But if somebody's bugging you to pay you, it's pretty nice. Uh, consistent visual presentation. Um, again, going back to branding. Everything I do in my world of uh, my business has this red. I use the same typeface, lacuna everywhere. Um, I use the same color scheme. It's, in my, it's on the book I just passed around. It's on my business cards. It's on my postcards. Anything online that I do, I use the same color, I use the same type. Um, be consistent, and people will start to sort of identify you with that consistency. For a while there, I was, I was trying to just play around with everything. 
But after a while, you just do kind of settle in on some stuff that you like. And I think over the past year, that's happened for me more often with a lot of the editorial work. And it didn't happen, uh, it wasn't so much intentional as just, hey, I really like this combination. And I think it just started showing up more and more. And there, there are cases where it doesn't show up because it's not appropriate for the subject matter. But yeah, like that, that piece that's on my homepage right now, you're absolutely right. Um, a lot of these colors do kind of pop in and out of my work a lot. Um, and I think it's just because I've started, I don't know, just gravitating more towards them. And I'm also, I think maybe they, they kind of set me apart a little bit. Uh, social media, so here we go. I love social media and I hate social media, but it's part of the world we live in. Um, so if, you're gonna, if you are going to have a Twitter page, which I do, um, or any of these things, Flickr or anything else, uh, or if you're going to post any information or try and get some followers to see what you're up to, stay relevant. I think that's, that's what I think is important. I, I was following an illustrator for a while who was telling me everything about his in and outs of daily life. You know, I just got a coffee. I, I just burped, whatever. <laughs> you know, I don't want to read about that. I've got valuable things to do you know, with my time. So, um, so I stopped following that, that, that guy. I, lo I love his work. So I think uh, stay relevant with your post. Either talk about the business you're in, try and point people towards something you find really fascinating and interesting, inspiring, that maybe they'll feel the same way. Um, talk about your own work. You know, um, Keep your posts brief, obviously. Uh, credit your sources. This is a big deal. Um, other creative folks will really get bothered if you point to just a JPEG or something somewhere online and don't say where it came from. or. Um, because you know people are out there making this stuff, and then it just kind of winds up everywhere. Uh, manage your time. That's super important. You can get so sucked into this stuff, Facebook and Twitter, and it's like an hour goes by and you haven't done anything real. Make sure you guys don't let that happen to you because it's it's just not productive, you know. Uh, so what I do is, uh, and this might work for some of you guys, um, if I'm in between doing one thing and another, I'll go out to Twitter for five minutes. And then no matter, no matter how much I've read, whether I've gotten through everybody's stuff or not, I stop myself and go back on track. And then days when I'm really busy, what I do is at the end of the day, when I'm done with all my real stuff, then I update all my blogs and all my Twitter and all that kind of stuff. Because if you, if you just interrupt your time too much during the day, it's really hard to stay focused. Um, use portfolio sites. Uh, are you guys familiar with Behance? So uh, Behance, it's Behance.net, I think. It might be .com, but I think it's .net. Uh, B-E-H-A-N-C-E. -E. Behance is a website for the whole world to post work. And then everybody else looks at the work and makes comments about it. And it's kind of like an, a worldwide open critique. It's kind of cool. And um, when it first started out, it was, it was by invitation only. And it was, it was really selective. But what was cool about that was the, the quality of work was always really good. So now, people who get on Behance, um, most of them won't post work unless it's really, really good work. So it's cool because it's become, it's become selective by choice of the users, even though it's open to everybody now. People don't post bad stuff. So that's a good place to show your work. And believe it or not, art directors and design directors and people who hire you will occasionally jump out to Behance and they'll, they're like everybody else. They browse the home page, okay? So there may be like 12 images on the home page. If you're not there, oh well. But that's why it's good to every now and again just post stuff, you know. Illustration Mundo, have you guys heard of that? It's uh, Illustration World in Spanish, mundo.com. Another place where as an illustrator you can just post your, post your news, post work about what, uh, news about what you're doing. And I've, I've had a couple jobs come through there. It's amazing. Um, Flickr, again, everyone knows about Flickr. Uh, maintain a professional tone. This is really important. Um, so easy now with email and everything else. You just, hey, so and so, what's up? You know, uh, if you don't know somebody, and if they're doing something you want to do, or they're, or they're, they're like, say, a fellow designer who you, you admire their work, just say, dear Mr. So and so, or dear Mrs. So and so, or dear Miss. Okay, please, I beg of you. I can't tell you how many emails I get a week from a student somewhere in the country. Hey, what's up, ODG? Blah, 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 blah. And like half the time, I'll read the first sentence and be like, well, nah, I don't want to talk to you. It's, and it's not because I'm, being, I'm not being snobby. I'm not whatever. It's just because it, just not, it doesn't make sense. That familiarity doesn't make sense. I'm in the middle of maybe drawing a picture for a client. 
And if I check my email and somebody's interrupting that workflow and not doing the courtesy of at least, you know, saying, dear so-and-so, here's why I'm contacting you. Here's what I'd like to ask you. Do you have a moment? Professional and, and courteous. It's, it's not, you know, I, I'm going to keep rolling. So um, same goes for anybody else I've talked to who's working right now. It's just, just be professional, you know. Watch your tone. Uh, you sound like an old man. Encourage interaction. Okay, this is really important. Um, nowadays, everybody expects everybody to be interacting with one another and to be participating in a community, right? That's what the, the web is. It's a, just a one big community. So if you are doing something on Twitter, ask questions and try and take polls and share your stuff in a way that makes other people feel like they're involved in your world. You know what I mean? Uh, that's going to really enhance the experience for you, and I guarantee it'll also um, bring you more connections. Uh, so that's, that's something to be thinking about whenever you're designing an interactive experience. Um, be creative. Use YouTube, you know, for sure, if you can think of a good way to use it. Um, a lot of people now, a lot of artists are posting uh, process posts. Have you guys seen these? It's super cool. Or, I love it. You know, the, here's me sketching for this assignment. Here's me doing the final art and you know, showing you that process. And that's really cool. Um, do it for yourselves. Finally, be truthful. Uh, the problem with being online and being exposed to the world is you can't really lie that well about something. So if you try and put up a front like you've done work for XYZ clients or that you've, you know, if, there's a, if you're being dishonest in any way, it probably will come back around and someone will figure it out. And then it's going to be twice as bad as the old days. When I was in high school, you know, if somebody did something and got caught and got in trouble, everyone's kind of like, oh, too bad for you. That's, that's too bad. Now everyone goes on Facebook. Did you hear what so-and-so did? Ah, and then the whole world knows you're an idiot. So be careful. Um, Drop-offs. I'm not going to say too much about this because nowadays it happens less and less. But if you are in the position to go to a design firm or uh, go to a, a prospective client and give them something, um, one, dress for success, dress well, dress professionally. Two, uh, let the work speak. These people, by letting you into their, their space and looking at your work, um, they're probably going to want to just look at the work and make their own judgments. Uh, it's really, really tempting when somebody's looking at your work for you to hover over them like a helicopter and say, oh, oh, this one I did this way and that way, and it's, it's not really my best, but here's why, because I was really sleepy. And just don't do that. Give them the work, and then stand back and let them think about it and process it. Um, leave a card for sure. You guys have business cards are so cheap nowadays. I think it's 30 bucks for like 500 cards or something crazy on uh, overnightprints.com. Super cool website. Uh, follow up, OK? My, my advice is to follow up two weeks. Everyone's got a different idea about that, but I do two-week follow-up. So, you know, call is usually good. Um, you can write an email. Emails sometimes get lost in the shuffle. And smile. Don't be a sourpuss. Um, associations and clubs, we talked a little bit about this already. AIGA, which we've got in Charlotte and Raleigh. The local arts council is always a good place to meet people. Um, Society of Publication Designers is in New York. I don't, I mean, I've been there once and if you are going to be an illustrator and you've already started doing some work for some publications, it's worthwhile maybe going to one event, but I'm not going to bring that one up too much. By the way, this is the old Paul Rand logo for AIGA, no longer being used, but I think it's the best one. Uh, drawing groups. You guys have, you know, there's figure drawing groups all around town. People get together and they just draw. It's a really cool community. Um, there's one in uh, downtown Greensboro at the Cultural Arts Center. I don't know what's around here, but there must be something. And then finally, young professionals. Um, don't just uh, stick to groups that have um, artists and photographers and designers. Go to any young professionals group. You know, uh, there are tons of them. They're in downtown Winston, there's one called The Dash. Have you guys heard about that? It's just all these people getting together, and once a week they do something fun. And what's good about it is it's, it's, it's networking. It's, you know, it's business networking, but in a really low-key way. You don't feel this, this pressure to sell yourself too hard. Um, so. Uh, I just want to caution you with competitions. There, there are millions of them out there. I'm sure you've seen, you get an email and it says, you could win $500 if you design our logo. Well, when I first started working as a designer, the minimum fee for a logo was five grand. Um, I don't know what happened, but now <laughs> you could design a logo for 500 bucks. Be careful. Uh, these competitions and crowdsourcing are really making it difficult for legitimate uh, professionals to charge a fair wage for a fair fee for what they're doing. And it's tricky. Um, 
So to make yourself stand out, don't get involved in stuff like that. If, if you know for a fact that the price is wrong, um, don't participate because you're just giving them your good work for you're undervaluing what you do. It's a bad idea. Now there are, of course, there are some out there that are a little better than others. You got to be careful. I, I, threadless, I think, is, is okay. Thre you guys know Threadless? Threadless is all right. Yeah, $2,500 for a t-shirt. That's fine with me. If you get reprints after a thousand or what is it, fifty thousand shirts, whatever it is, is it five hundred bucks, totally fair. To be honest, I did some T-shirts for a company in LA, which is a big brand, and I didn't get half that much. And so I kept the copyright, whatever. Um, look for fair fees and prizes. Yeah, protect your copyright. That's big. Uh, contracts. I think I, I know you, you printed out some of those. They've, they've circled around. Excellent. Uh, there's a book you can pick up called The Graphic Artists Guild. You got it? Okay. What is it? Guide to ethical. Yeah, pricing and ethical guidelines. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All the contract stuff you want, all the estimate stuff in there. Great templates, great forms, and all that. Wonderful. They're all back there. Um, so be selective. And I think that covers self promotion. Yeah.